Super Fun Stuff. Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. Today we have another print and paint video. I teased him a little bit in the last video, and now it's time to reveal the character. I said he was a small character with big personality, and he is from the Marvel Universe. Also, he was the only character to register for the Superhero Registration Act in Civil War comics, but the government ignored that and said that he officially does not exist due to his disruptive social life. Drinking, smoking, parties, the works. So who do you think it is? And the answer is Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck is an interesting Marvel character. He was introduced in 1973 in the comic called Adventure into Fear, and was a side character to the superhero called Man-Thing. Eventually he got his own comic in 1976, and the character evolved from there. When Howard was first created, he looked a lot like Donald Duck. Marvel made an agreement with Disney to redesign Howard, with one huge benefit. They gave him pants. Howard the Duck is, well, a duck that was abducted from his duck world and put into ours. Howard is a three-foot talking duck who smokes cigars and drinks, wears suits, and he can be very rude and crass. He has no superpowers, however, he does know the martial arts style called Quack Fu. He has also teamed up with many of the most popular Marvel characters, including Spider-Man. Online, there is a nice model shared by Boris 3D Studio, and portrays him in a serious dark look. It has Howard smoking a cigar and holding a revolver, a very nice sculpt. So let's get started making Howard the Duck. Well first I print the miniature. Howard was printed on an anycubic photon and scaled according to the 40mm size. This is comparative to the other minis I've been making. The detail from this print was awesome and everything printed out perfectly. One of the first problems with painting a small guy like Howard is the sheer size of him. There's nothing to hold, no place to pin him. So what I first do is make a base. This time I'll walk through the whole process of making a cork rock base. First, take your base. This is 40 millimeter base. Next, take a sheet of cork board, big enough for the base. Take your cork board and trace the top part of the base out. You should have a decent circle. Next, take a pair of scissors and cut the circle out. Don't expect to have a nice clean cut. This cork kind of tears instead, but that's a good thing and we want that. Now I have a circular piece of cork. Next, apply some super glue in the base and slap the pieces together. Make sure to put enough to hold the cork down well. I like to press on the base a little bit on the table to get a nice even pressure on all sides. Now the cork will extend past the base a little bit. I take an X-Acto knife and go around the cork cutting it flush to the base. I try not to make too many perfect straight cuts so ripping little pieces make good textures. After I cut the base, I go through any of the flat areas and chunk some of it out to make it more interesting. Any little pieces that fall, make sure to keep as you can use them later. So Howard is a pretty short guy. He sits kind of low on the base. So let's add another layer to make it a bit taller. If you have a lot of room on the base, it's nice to make it more interesting. Now I rip another little piece of cork and try to get it in an interesting shape. Now you can see that Howard has a base that is more fun and more dynamic. I take some more super glue and glue the second piece of cork on top. When you rip cork board, mostly it comes out nice on the sides, but it's very flat and square still. Almost feels two dimensional. So what I like to do is take my X-Acto knife again and rip up some of the hard angles. To make even more depth, I take out little leftover pieces, rip them in half, and glue them on the base. The point is to make something that doesn't look like a basic piece of cork board, which I see on so many models. Looking at this, you can't even tell it was cork. It has good dimensions and feels very organic like rock. In addition to this, I decide to add a piece of cork vertically to give a little height to the base. So Howard is small and I'm unable to pin him. However, the 3D model has nubs for his feet. I take the time to cut little holes out in the base ahead of time to plan where Howard will go. This will help also gluing him later easier. Now with the base created, I go ahead and primer everything. Always an important step. With Howard, I glue a temporary toothpick underneath one foot, so I had something to hold while I sprayed him with the primer. I make sure to use very little glue so I can break it off later. Before I mount Howard on the base, I decide it makes more sense to finish the base. That way I don't get excessive paint on the mini. So I go in with a plain pewter gray, I use a cheaper Michaels paint since I use a lot of paint, and I go pretty heavy since I want full coverage. I go ahead and break off the toothpicks I glued on Howard earlier. Once the base's base color is done, I use a strong dark brown wash and apply it all over very heavily. Don't be shy with the wash, but the more you put on, the more time it takes to dry. With the wash dried, I do my dry brushing. I use a lighter ash gray, then a greenish yellow necrotic flesh, and then lastly a pure white. 
After my dry brushing, I take a dark brown pigment and hit all the darker recess areas to give a dirtier look, but also gives a little more depth. And the base is done, for now. Now let's go to Howard. Howard has a lot of strong colors, but the two in particular that can cause problems are orange and white. To make sure that I have a good vibrant color on areas, I take a white and paint these problem solve areas ahead of time. I eliminate any shadows or dark recesses from the primer. What you notice from me painting the white is how cumbersome I am painting the small mini. There isn't anything to hold. This means I need to get him on the base sooner than later. But before I put him on my base, I go paint my orange. I like to eliminate any chance of ruining my base after putting my mini on it. Since Howard's feet are orange, I will at a minimum paint those. But orange is in two places, his feet and the duckbill. So why not do both real quick? With the orange, I do a glaze method, mixing orange with the medium glaze. This should give me somewhat good colors and highlights for later. When you do a glaze with orange like this, orange and white looks a little boring and flat. A lot of images of Howard show many yellows integrated with the orange. So using the same concept, I take a yellow mix with the glaze and go over the orange. Since my yellow is thin, it won't cover the orange, but instead tints the white in the lighter sections. And we have a good color for the feet and bill. Now it's time for putting Howard on the base. I take the same super glue and dab some in the holes and some on the bottom of his feet. And then I glue them into place. With Howard on the base, I have something to hold on to now. It makes painting so much easier. Now I go with painting his shirt. I use an off-white skeleton bone and mix that with the glaze as well. I want to make sure that his shirt and his feathers aren't too close in color and they have a noticeable difference. Now I go through and try a burgundy color. I also mix it with the glaze, but to be honest, I wish I didn't. Just make sure to take your time with colors like red and white, since a small mistake can take some effort to fix later. Red is one of those colors that can be hard to cover over if you make a mistake. I go in and paint his pants, his hat, and lastly his tie. And that's it for the base colors for this model. Very simple and quick. The glaze method can be helpful, but be careful since you have to put it on very thick. After waiting what felt like an eternity to dry, I started to paint more details. I go in and first paint the gun. It's a plain silver. Now I take a lighter brown and paint the cigar. This thing is so small, it was kind of hard to see where the cigar met the bill. Now let's apply some washes. Howard's feathers are white, which are great, but we need to give them more depth to the details. So I take the lightest wash I had and paint it all over. You can try painting the details individually and carefully, but good luck. Painting all the white areas with the wash, then fixing them with a highlighted white is so much easier. However, his shirt is a different story. Here I selectively use the same wash in certain areas. I go around where the arms meet the chest, around the tie, and around the collar. Then we go to the pants. I use a dark black wash to accent all the areas like the pockets very well. I also use the same black wash on the gun. Next it's time to go into highlights. I go back to a pure white for his feathers. I make sure to take my time and hit all the major white areas, but I keep the washed parts in the crevices only. The white took a little bit of time to make sure I didn't make a mess. Here you can see how the details remain, but the color goes back to the white we want. Onto the pants. I take the same dark red and add a little white. This gives a brighter color that looks kind of like a mauve. I then go one step lighter and paint some more light accents. And onto the shirt. I take a pure white and hit only the main highlighted areas. I go light and try not to take too much of the shirt details away. For this, less was more. And here's what he looks like so far. Much better. Now I take a light silver and highlight the gun a bit. There isn't a lot to do with the gun since it's so small. Then we go to the orange areas like the bill. I take a light yellow and then touch up some of the edges. Nothing major. Now I take a bright red and orange and do a little tip of the cigar. It's tiny, so you'll have to do a little dot here or there. And so far, so good. And now maybe the hardest part of this entire mini, the eyes. He has blue eyes. They aren't big and they're surrounded by white. Here you have to take your time and use a thin brush. I paint the blue on fairly well and move to the black for the pupils. Painting black near white like this makes a very tense situation. To add a little bit of a nice touch, I take some white and make a little tiny dot in the corner of the eye. This gives that nice eye shine effect. Oh, and if you're like me, you'll forget to paint things. Like here, I forgot about the feet. So I go back and paint a little highlights like the bill. Oops. To finish the base, I paint the black border around it. And here he is, looks pretty good, but I'm still kind of bored with the model. He looks nice, but it needs something. Since Howard is a party duck, I decided to print out little small beer bottles. I print them out in a translucent resin and coat them with a green wash. 
This gave the perfect bottle effect. I glue in the bottles in assortment of ways to give the effect that he made a big mess. I take the time to paint the bottle labels and add a little cigar ash pile. To top everything off, I add a little clear resin around few of the tipped over bottles to make it look like it poured out a bit. And there you have it, Howard the Duck in miniature form. I'm really happy how this turned out. Even I'm surprised at how good he looks. The bottles at the end make a world of difference too. Now he is ready to fight the rest of the minis I've been making. For my next print paint video, I think I'll go more robotic. I now have a good backlog of characters to make and film for you. They just all take time to paint. So this next guy is a mechanical beast that mows down his enemies. He was awesome in the comics and in the movies. I hope you enjoyed my video and thank you to all my patrons and other supporters and also thank you for watching.